Hey Megalithomaniacs, welcome to Gobekli Tepe. We're here in the visitor center before we go up to the site, which we now take a bus to. But there's a couple of interesting artifacts here at this potentially 12,000 year old site. Now there's many more artifacts and displays and even a reconstruction of Enclosure D at San Leofa Museum. But here they've got a couple of artifacts I want to show you before we head up there. Um, it's, we're here at the winter solstice around the 22nd of December 2021 and we have already been to Carahan Tepe and the video is already out about that. But this is like the primary site, the kind of mother site of all this area in the Tastepela region of southeast Turkey. So the first artifact we come across is this, which is very interesting. It's thought to be the head of a leopard. Now we find many of these at Gebekli Tepe and the surrounding sites. You can see some of the details on it there. But again, this is like one of the main motifs we find here. And we'll see that also when we go in the site. But it's fantastic they actually have it on display here. So if we keep going up, they've got like a display area here. And then they've got one of the many heads which have been found at Gebekli Tepe. We saw more in the museum. You can see the details on that just there. And of course, they have a reconstruction of Pillar 43. Pillar 43, this is one of the most important parts of Gebekli Tepe in Enclosure D and probably the most decorated. And if we look at this in detail, you can see that there's a huge amount of symbology carved throughout this pillar, including around this side as well. And so there's a lot going on. Also, it's one of the shorter ones at the site. So we have this motif at the top, the three what looks like bags. They could have been more like kind of buckets or, or uh, baskets. There's all these zigzags, there's this vulture, there's a central circle there which could re represent a hole. Some people say it represents the center of the, the Milky Way. And Martin Twetman, Andrew Collins, and others believe there's an astronomical and astrological symbolism taking place all the way down here. But I'll, uh, I'll leave that for you to decide about that. I just want to show you the stunning stonework here for now even though this is a reconstruction in the museum. But even on the side here, a lot of people don't realize there's very interesting carvings, which often get overlooked because they're always looking at the front. And you can just see that here, Let's step back a little bit. And it continues down there, much like the classic tea pillars where it's almost like someone wearing a jacket or some kind of cape which folds around the front. So potentially this still, you know, like the other tea pillars represents a head Although this is very abstract. But yeah, there's like the scorpion, there's the crane, there's different birds. There's even like little H's on the side here as well. But these bags are interesting. Some people suggest they're like symbolic of you know, carrying wisdom. They could even carry the sacraments of the ancient people. Others say they have completely different meaning and they represent different aspects of the sky and the sun possibly the moon but around here and is interesting also we've got the back that hasn't even been exposed yet so there could be more there but here we have like a leopard we have different motifs and yeah this is one of the most interesting and beautifully decorated ones and one of the shorter stones at Gebekli Tepe up to the main site of Gebekli Tepe. So this is Enclosure E. They call this the Rock Temple, which sounds super rock and roll. But this is, we've made a video about this before. I put the link in the, in the comments, um, in the description below. And you can see this was once an enclosure. Now the reason that's true is because you can see two pillar bases there. Pillars have now gone. They could be actually the ones that are behind us over here which I just photographed, which I show you here. And you've got these huge wells, you've got cut marks all over the ground here. And this is a really, really important part of the site, even though it doesn't look like too much is here. Now, 
until the discovery of building C and D in the main excavation area, it was not realized that this structure was also once a monumental building. Uh, we have T-shaped pillars, stone walls, they're all missing, but the smooth limestone floor and carved pedestals are still there. And you can see more here. You can see these kind of holes in the ground. Just over there, there are actually cut marks all over the place. And I'll show you some other footage from previous visits because these cut marks are very interesting, something that JJ has been working on based upon the work of uh, Marion Gimbutas, where she believes they are like sacred water collectors and the water would then be used for healing. Actually, just down here, you've got an example very close to us just there. So what are two of the cut marks? So this whole floor and even the tops of the T pillars were literally covered, and you've got a giant cut mark there, actually covered in these cut marks, suggesting it was a very important part of their ritual uh, routine. Actually, just here could be one of the pillars. So this is uh, very interesting. So that could be one of the broken pillars that was originally upright inside the kind of carved pits. And just below us over there, there's actually an area just on the top, just at the edge of the hill, which we've walked over before, which actually has shaped cut stones. Just they were also quarrying here. So we have more examples very badly worn cut marks again this is part of the kind of sacred tradition sacred goddess tradition here at Gebekli Tepe I think one of the things that is really overlooked when it comes to studying places like Gebekli Tepe everyone just assumes it's all built by men I don't know if you think that you can talk about it in the comments below but the more I've looked into this, especially with JJ researching this very specific kind of super ancient goddess and fertility aspects, it's really opened my eyes to the fact that actually the designers and the builders and even the, the humans that are kind of represented here in an abstract artistic form may in fact be female. There's something to be said about that, especially as this is Navel Hill or the Pregnant Belly Hill, different names given to this and so, very interesting that there's and it's a side of this research that, that certainly needs more research to kind of indicate you know what is really going on here there's also you know one of the one of the things that kind of makes that kind of valid to me is these cut marks because there's been real no clear explanation of those we have some just over here just near the entrance in one of the earlier enclosures where the, the, the pillars are missing but yeah it's worth considering different different perspectives when we're looking at these sites. So we're now walking up to the main part of the site of Gebekli Tepe. Now, this is a very famous site, obviously 12,000, nearly 12,000 years old. There's new excavations going on over the other side. I just tried to get in and they wouldn't let me in. But the main enclosures here are just mind blowing. And we're hopefully coming at the right time of day. Where we're gonna get some sunlight as the sun gets lower to see what's going on here. So here we are at Gebekli Tepe and we're looking down on enclosure D, possibly the most impressive part of the entire site. It has two huge pillars in the center and you can see in, in the museum, they've reconstructed this amazingly. And what's really interesting though, is the fact that there's 12 around the edge in a kind of oval and it's got a terrazzo carved flat floor and there is actually seats between the different pillars around it. It's not just a wall, it's actually seats. And much like we saw the carved out hypogeum thrones at Carahan Tepe, I think this is reminiscent of that, even though this may have come first, where they were seated areas. They were kind of throne areas, if you like, for the elite, probably the builders of this site. Now this one area here has three very important enclosures. You can see those all here. Uh, but enclosure D is the most famous. It has just down there, we have pillar 43 with all the beautiful carvings on it, the astrological carvings. And we have the kind of anthropomorphic kind of human type figures in the center, the two main pillars with the arms and the hands touching the belt with the H's and the serpents on it. And it's just so rich this site on so many levels. Amazing to be here at Gebekli Tepe once again. We know this dates to at least 9,600 BC, although there is evidence, even Klaus Schmidt, when, when me and Andrew spoke to him in 2014, even suggested it might be as old as 14,000 years old, at least some of it, maybe not the whole site. And 
so there's a lot of elements here that are still being excavated there's a whole area over the other side which has got a whole roof built on it now and that's actually um yet to be fully excavated it's not even going to be over at least another year so more discoveries are being made up here where on the other side there on the ridge they found a whole area where it's like domestic where people were kind of living apparently i just spoke to one of the archaeologists here one of the workers here they told us that and they say there's a lot more to come i mean when i was chatting with them so let's see what happens now unfortunately klaus schmidt died and the people who've taken over don't really let you see too much but we're going to be coming here in september 2022 as part of our big tour to turkey and this is one of the primary sites the primary site we're going to visit we're also going to visit karahan tepe as well where we made some amazing discoveries regarding the winter solstice you can see that video of that revelation below and the museum is amazing. All the artifacts from Gebekli Tepe and uh, Karahan Tepe and Navali Churi, all the other Tas Tepela sites are now on display there. More will be on display before September. This one is enclosure B. Now this has got an artificial floor, not carved out of like the bedrock like the others. So there's a possibility there could be more beneath this. And you see the huge portal stone in the middle there and also a kind of uh, bowl as well. Also, we've got some very good foxes on here. We've got this one over here, which absolutely fascinates me. Another portal stone sort of heading towards the north with all some beautiful carvings. I'll show you some other images of that. But notice the cut marks on top. Now we find this all over the site, not just in this enclosure. Cut marks on top of the pillars, as well as on the floor, carved out of the solid bedrock. This is something that we find in Britain, we find in different parts of the world, something JJ has been researching, suggesting that this was like where they would collect water and it'd be like a healing water then that was used for rituals and ceremony and healing practices. And so to have them on top of the pillars, this could have been added later, or it could have been part of the design, because some of them don't have it, some do. And so this you know, brings the whole idea together that this may have been a goddess site. What we're looking at here is, this is enclosure A, and I'll show you some more images, some better photos. And this is one of the late phases of the pre-pottery Neolithic. And this is 12 by 13 meters. And it's a very, it's got a low bench around it as well, much lower than the others. And it's got some beautiful, beautiful carvings on it as well. And at an entrance um, to the structure, and, and it's like a north, southwest, northeast kind of alignment apparently in it. So there we have enclosure A. Just behind it there is enclosure B. We have enclosure E kind of underneath the whole kind of walkway. This one down here is enclosure C, one of the most impressive. And obviously enclosure D over there. And just uh, in the far distance, which you can't really see, is enclosure F kind of behind, just underneath the walkway. This is enclosure C, this is one of my favorites, to be honest with you. And you can see on the pillar there, we have the beautiful 3D relief carving of some kind of critter. Now this is something quite unique, quite stunning. And it's bigger than you think. I put some photos in that I took last time, I managed to get some good light on it. Today, not so good, because I've got this, this roof on it, which kind of spoils thing, but yeah, I guess it protects it. Uh, you've got another one there, another stone there with beautiful kind of bore with a hole on it as well with a sort of what looks like dodos and some kind of grid pattern. And so, yeah, this is one of the older enclosures and it's just quite a lot to take in in one visit, but come and check it out with us in September 2022. So we have quite a good view of enclosure D. You can see the giant pillars there, but there's so much going on here. There's a... Uh, carvings on virtually every pillar. It's as close as we can get. I would love to get inside these, but thankfully you can in the museum in Sandy Erfa. We also have this small enclosure, one of the later ones that was kind of added just not long after, you know, because even under this, there's probably more enclosures. That's the point of Gobekli Tepe. They were like burying like each enclosure when it was fulfilled its use, almost like burying their ancestors and then continuing to build more on top, build mounds, then build more on top. And this is like very much this kind of principle there where the winter solstice could have been part of this, where they were kind of 
referencing the, the death of the year and the rebirth of the year. And so they were like burying, and then it was like the dead, the ancestors, and then building on top the rebirth. Starting to get the sun coming at a bit of a lower angle. But again here, if you look on the top of the pillars there, you can actually see very good in the sunlight, the T-shape along with the kind of cut marks right on top of them. I love the fact that how abstract and strange shaped some of these pillars are because they're not all identical. They're not the same style. They kind of bend and shape as though there's some kind of artistic uh, element that we don't really know about, but it proves that the mindset of these peoples wasn't just like technological, it was artistic and kind of beautiful. So there's a whole bunch of excavation which is currently taking place apparently here at Gobekli Tepe. Now we were talking to one of the local archaeologists and one of the people who work here and they said this is the area where it's all happening and they're finding some really interesting things. Apparently uh, our friends, the prehistory guys, had an interview with one of the archaeologists here who's going to give some insights as to what's being discovered. But they say it may not even, this area may not even be open for another year, maybe two years. And so there's some serious digging going on. So we can see part of it's been exposed here. This appears to be smaller enclosures, but this is also where they found one of the statues that has lions on it, amongst other things. And so, yeah, there's still much more going on here, even though the main part of the site, it seems the oldest part of the site may already be an excavator, like enclosure D and C and A and so forth. But yeah, let's see what happens and uh, continue our journey exploring ancient Turkey. So this is just the area where some excavation, there's much smaller enclosures, smaller stones in this area, probably later here. But this one over here is of interest because this is where they're finding, which you can see the big roof on it there. This is where they're finding some really interesting, quite megalithic discoveries. But we're gonna to have to wait and see what these are. I don't think my zoom is gonna to help too much, but it's worth a try. Uh, I've tried to get in there and get shots, tried to get permission to go in there from the archaeologists we met, but no chance. Uh, it's worth a try though. In the far distance below us there is Pillar 43. Now we have a much better duplicate of that in the museum. Now there's a lot of debate about what's on it. There's much symbology. Martin Sweatman's done research on it, as has Andrew Collins. JJ's looked into it. It really is one of the mysteries and one of the real messages that could be here for us to decode at Gebekli Tepe. Before you leave the site, you walk past this very interesting enclosure, enclosure F, they call it. It's part of the southwest of the main kind of tepe, and it's early pre-pottery Neolithic B. It's 7.5 meters wide, and it has several T-shaped pillars, eight in total, with an with a artificial uh, terrazzo floor. Now, there's gonna be more of these enclosures, and these are kind of strangely, even though this could be quite ancient, this is probably built upon other ones. Uh, it's an oval ground plan, um, and much like the other ones here, and it's, uh, it's a very interesting structure because it's like one of the oldest potentially at the site, even though it's one of the highest up. So I hope you enjoy it. You can actually see some carvings on this stone here, which I just zoomed in on. If you actually look carefully at that stone there on the right, that one has actually got, you can see the arm kind of carved on it. Another eight of these T-shaped pillars. And obviously something's being covered up there. So we'll try and find photos of what was found. But this is one of those, one of those obscure enclosures, one of many here at Gebekli Tepe. But yeah, we hope you enjoyed our visit to Gebekli Tepe around the time of the winter solstice 2021. We've made some incredible uh, discoveries here especially at Karahan Tepe and some other sites and what's in the museum JJ's been decoding these so we hope you enjoy this quick sojourn around Gebekli Tepe how it is now we're waiting in anticipation as to what's going to be found over there in that kind of beneath that roof one of the archaeologists said there's a lot going on there and that's going to be uncovered not for at least another year but yeah, it's worth checking out. We're glad we came here. It's a beautiful day. It's a cold morning. We're, on a, we're very close to Christmas, just after the winter solstice. Can't really see any alignments here because of the roof and the way that the site was actually originally built up and rebuilt upon over and over again. Now, I believe this is a temple site. I believe this is more than just a practical site. People have debated this on YouTube and other places. There's 
alignments here with Cygnus. The Sirius alignments don't really stand up to scrutiny. I know Andrew Collins has looked at that in detail, whereas the Cygnus ones do, um, even though there's some debate about was there walls and mounds in front of them when they probably weren't. But there's a lot going on at Gebekli Tepe, so we wanted just to give you a quick introduction, a quick look around as it is today. And if you compare it with how it was when we first came here in 2013, it's a different animal completely. And But we have to appreciate the fact that it's being preserved there's much more to be discovered and the new excavations are very exciting so let's wait and see and hopefully we'll see some of it when we come back here in september 2022 when we're running our official megalithomania tour we're going to obviously be coming here in karahan tepe and many other sites around ancient turkey derin kuyu chetel hoyak hatusa and so forth so look out for that details are below and thanks for watching please become a patron if you can to help support our research and our explorations um, it's really hard work some of this I mean it's not it's not all kind of luxury or anything like that so we we do appreciate any support in that realm so um, thanks for watching and we really do appreciate your support and we're signing off here on winter solstice 2021 from Gebekli Tepe in southeast Turkey an amazing site and well worth a visit well worth looking into if you haven't heard about it before so take care megalithomaniacs and we'll see you next time